Do do. Let's see. There we go. Come out of the mud. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Texas, how are you doing, Diane? Perfect. I never know if my AirPods connect or not, so that's why I'm asking. Well, let me make sure my I'm going to wipe off my camera really quick because I feel like it's like fuzzy. So give me one second. I might get a little bit blurry before I ruin anything. Right here. Is that better? Maybe it's the lighting. probably a little bit today because I have, I literally just walked out here. My, is it too quiet? Can you not hear me? My son is out of school. Well, half, two of my kids are out of school already and two of them are still in school. So my husband just took um, my youngest to summer camp, but that's only for two and a half, three hours. So I have to be the mommy in the morning, so that's why I am just getting out here today. But um, it is, let's see, it's 1236 where I am. And he has camp from 1230 to 330, so I guess it's three hours. Um, but I have to go pick my other two up from school still. At, I have to leave here at 230. So I only have a couple hours with you guys, but something's better than nothing. But I'm here. I have some work to do so it's kind of going to be like I just need to work so hopefully you guys are up for watching me work today because I need to put out some things we're going on vacation on Saturday so I kind of need to like, like get everything done before we go and yeah so I'm gonna let's see where do we want to put this I'm gonna I guess um, I guess leave it like that but let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Is it still quiet? Three hours difference. Are you three hours ahead of me? 3.30 your time? right now I literally just walked out here so I haven't even gotten to look at my schedule so I want to see Monday so today is we get back so we leave on Saturday and we get back on Sunday so I need to get all my orders done up to I like to usually do them um, when I go on 
on vacation. I like to get all my orders out. So if I get back on the 5th, I like to make sure all my orders are done up to like the 7th. That way I don't have to worry about it when I get back and stress about getting orders out because I have laundry to do, you know, when you go on vacation and you get back and it's like, ah, like what do I have to do now? So especially I have four kids, so I have to do laundry and all the other stuff that goes along with being on a vacation for a long time. So that's what I usually plan on doing when I go on vacation. So let me, I gotta go grab all the orders. message when I shouldn't have. There we go. Hey, Rebecca. Just me and working. Awesome. Hopefully my AirPods are working. See if I can hear me okay. They have a mind of their own. Sometimes they'll work when I use my phone for lives, and sometimes they won't. So hopefully they are working. I am good. I just got out here, so I'm just doing my basic changing trash, getting ready for the day. I can only work for like two hours with you guys on here before I have to go pick up my kids and then I'll probably come back out here later tonight and finish up what I need to. Can you make a romper out of cotton? Um, you can, absolutely, but I don't, I mean, I would make it bigger. I don't usually suggest cotton for a romper because there's no stretch to it. And usually you, you wanna use like, um, like a knit, a knit fabric for, rompers, stuff like that. You can use a cotton. It's totally fine. It's just not going to be stretchy at all. I'm going to grab some orders. Look at what I have over here. I need to get this, these, and these. So I'm going to cut these first. separately. I'm going to start cutting some fabric. So I can actually move you guys closer if you want to be closer so you can see what I'm doing. I'll just go like this. Is that good? for your bibs and nursing pads. So that is actually right here, I, I pre-cut it. This is just um, anti-peel plush uh, fleece. So it's a very, very soft and thick and absorbent. So I don't know if you can, I can't really tell because of the shadows, but you can see it's a very like plush. I don't know what other word to use besides that, but it's super, super, super soft. You can use, um, what's it called? I can't even think of it right now. It's towel, uh, towel fabric. What's the name of that? <laughs> I can't think right now. But um, you can use that as well. But I just like this because it's so soft and I love soft stuff. So here's like actually like a couple pre-made 
nursing pads. Um, I like to make extra sometimes if I'm just cutting out and doing it, I just sometimes will do extra. But here's a girl one, so you can see, and then the backing is just the anti-peel um, fleece, and it's just really, really soft. So that's my Christmas scrap fabrics, and then I have, of course, my donut one. So they're all exactly the same. They have um, the organic cotton knit on top, and then they have the anti-peel uh, fleece in the back, and then inside of it, it's sandwiched with the pool fabric. It's waterproof so that it doesn't leak. And that is this right here in this drawer. I, I cut them out all five by five squares. That way I can make a four by four um, after it's all surged together. Yes, Terry Cloth, thank you. <laughs> I like, um, my brain's everywhere lately. I want to get some, but I forget the name of it. Yeah, you can get it at Joann's. That's where I get mine, actually. I've tried so many different kinds, and that's just the one that I really, really like. It's the softest. It's actually the anti-pill. Make sure it's plush, because there's a difference. You can get the regular one, and that's fine, but the plush one is just very soft compared to the other ones. So... All my 18 to 24s. Actually, here, let me grab all these sizes. So these are my new acrylic um, patterns. I got these ones a while ago. I just cut out my legging ones for you guys the other day. I still haven't finished the other ones, but I don't have time to do that right now. So we're not going to do that. So I need 0 to 3 and 20 to 18. So I usually just bring them all over here. I hang them on my table. Cactus and it's 18 to 24 months, so it's going to be at the very back probably. 12 to 18. I keep being not lucky <laughs> with them because I keep getting just the, the wrong size. So 12 to 18, this, which you guys, I have it, so I don't have to make this one. This one's already done. Sarah. I know I 
love the acrylics. You guys are, they're, they're literally the best. My computer keeps going crazy. I want to get some type of thing of it. Still contemplating making a website. How are you liking yours since you switched to Shopify? I actually love it. It's so much easier. Um, well, I mean, I had a company that, that did my last website that I wasn't really super thrilled with. Um, so before I get into that, because these are already made, I still repress them, lint roll them and everything because they've been in the bin. So I want to repress them. Um, I used these hanger tags when I was at the store. So I got to cut this off. I just double check everything, make sure it's all good. There's nothing on them. And then I can reheat them, press them to get, when you press it at a high temperature, it just like basically gets all the moisture and germs and all that stuff out of it. So, I'm gonna have this one over there. Uh, back to the website. So Shopify is amazing, it's super easy. It took me a very, very long time to set up because I started over from scratch. Like I wanted to do a completely new website. It's completely different than my last one. Um, but again, I love it. I got, I had to, got to make it myself, so it's exactly how I want it. It took me a while, a really long time, but what I found is that TikTok has really, really helped me grow with the website because TikTok is all about small businesses. And it's just, I didn't believe in it at first. I know you guys are probably iffy on it, those of you that don't use it, but if you want to market for yourself and not pay for someone, because I was paying for someone to market it and it didn't work out, um, Get yourself on TikTok. It'll work, I promise. I every time I go on there and I see that people are on my website, it shows you where in the world they're on. And then also I have a way of knowing who orders from what site. So I'm able to see where the where the orders are coming from, which is really nice. So My, those of you who have been with me for a while know that my brother used to cut for me and so whenever I see these little parallel pieces in here that's from him sticking them in here working on trying to get these orders cut out because we're leaving on vacation and I need to get all these orders out. All my orders need to go out up to the 7th because we get back on the 5th and so I just like to get them all done before we go. So that case I'm going to go this way. I like to use the most of my fabric. So I just try every which way. It is very warm in here. So I'm just cutting out today. These are what I'm cutting, my bunnies. What kind of hangers do you use to hang the templates? These are just like, they're not exact, they're called S sets, I guess, but they're like opposite. They're not like straight, they're sideways. I don't know if you can see it, but I can hang them on there and then they all go parallel to each other. So they're not all like spread out. I can make more room with them. I got them on Amazon. No, she actually closed her store down. COVID hit her hard and we just, we closed shop down. So I haven't been there for a while, but I had so much clothing in her store because what had happened was right before she closed, we did a relaunch and I made a bunch of stuff. And so then like that same exact week, I was like, oh my gosh, I just made so much stuff for her store. And um, so that's everything in those bins up top, up top there where you can see I have leggings, bummies, the whole, everything I sell basically. 
and I just pull from that whenever I get orders. So I'm running low on them now, so I first check in the bin. If I don't have it, then I'll cut it. We are going to Houston to go visit my brother and sister-in-law and their children. Are you getting any orders for Shopify than Etsy and Crave? German. Yeah, so twisted hooks. Yeah, they are, yeah, they're purse hooks, that's right. Um, so it depends, like on the week. Every week is different. Sometimes I get more on Shopify, sometimes I get more on Etsy. It just depends. Um, right now I upped my shipping on Etsy because whenever I go on vacation, I don't like to stress out <laughs> and get a ton of orders. So I'll mess with the algorithm a little bit and I'll change my shipping because I want to just be on vacation and relax. So I always know like if I mess with anything with the algorithm, I just know my shop because I've been doing it for a while that it takes two weeks for it to get back to normal. So like no matter what I do, messing with it I give it two weeks to replenish and then it's like back to normal again so whenever I go on vacation I do that so that I can just have a good time and not worry about it so that's what I've been doing this is really it's been in there so I'm gonna press it and turn my air down in here it is warm. Um, but yeah, I like to, I don't necessarily put it on vacation mode, but I up my shipping time and prices I mess with a little bit. Just random stuff to mess up the algorithm. that live so I didn't I think I missed something oh I see okay about the store For anything. So I toss it. And I hate when this happens because then I have just a little tiny piece that I need it for. But this is what I do now. I don't know if you guys can see it from that angle. But what I've been doing is I know I need two of these. So what I've been doing is just rolling it one, two, three. That's basically four. And then I scoot it over just a tiny bit. And instead of cutting the whole strip off, I'm just gonna cut what I need. And it's basically under the mountain. This is how I've been saving so much fabric. Probably looks weird to you guys, but it's been saving me so much fabric instead of wasting it. So I do that. And then what you can actually do is just, I just go like this. You can fold it in half, fold it in half again. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. exactly the way it should have been cut so, or the length I mean I know I cut it right just you know what I mean you can double it
Honey, this is my, um, it's called Sonora Sunrise Cactus. So it's just like a cactus one that I have. It's probably really bad but this is the fabric that is being released here pretty soon uh, Sarah from Sarah and creations actually drew this for me so she's the illustrator and it's beautiful but it represents my life and how I grew up in the desert the horses and all the good Western stuff so that will be released pretty soon <laughs> watching you on my break from australia thank you so much for tuning in on your break i recently changed my shipping as well from free to free with 35 and it's been so expensive. yeah so rebecca i actually did that too because i knew that that would make a difference so what i did was i'm i still do free over 35 but i used to do free shipping no matter what except for on like headbands and like little things like that i would do like I think $3 shipping because it's like a $1.50 or something. So, um, okay, one of each. So yeah, I, I moved that and I've noticed a difference in that too because people want free shipping. So I'm like, that'll change it. This one's non-directional, so you can cut it whichever way fits, as long as the stretch is going the right way. Hear me good? Bunnies. 
You guys, I messed up. So, I messed up, so I'm not thinking. I did the stretch the wrong way. So, because the stretch goes this way, and I can't use that for anything except for nursing pads. At least it was a legging or a cuff. I always get a gut feeling where I'm like, I didn't check that. Did I do it right? And I hope that I did it right. And that time I didn't do it right. And that time I did. So there's one. I don't think two of them can fit in here. Uh, nope. So this one will be safe. I'm probably confusing you guys, but I know what I'm doing. Trust me. <laughs> So like the stretch is going this way and I always know I need to do it on the fold so like nothing can fit on that, not even a newborn. So then I know I just can use it for my cuffs or my nursing pads. So this one, there's a long piece right here. So this is from, not when I've cut out, I hate bashing my brother, <laughs> but I'm sure you guys all know after you do it for a really long time, you know how to smart cut. And so this isn't smart cutting. So now I'm trying to use up all the scraps that I've had in here since he's been gone. And so I'm like, I can't wait till I get through all these scraps and stop wasting so much fabric. So that is the 12 to 18, which is done. So yeah, I've been working on getting these scraps gone for a really long time. Not quite a year, but when did he leave? He left like right before Thanksgiving. So six-ish months, I think. Flower, always check the shade of the color because sometimes it comes even if I order the same exact one if I go under my orders and just hit re like reorder sometimes they'll come because it's print on demand so the shades could be off a little bit so I always always check just to make sure that it's the same exact color because I can give you an example if I want to go through that which I don't want to where there's like a different shade of this mustard color. And you can't really tell, but I can tell. So I just always check it. So I don't have two different things going on. And I know that this stretches the way. I just have it turned so you guys can see me. I just do a little bit. So like this piece I can't do anything with, so I'm just gonna cut that off. this differently but I just like this method now I just feel like it helps me save my fabric so sometimes if I have a bunch to put out I'll just come over here and I'll just do this I don't want to waste all that so I just go like this but make sure you leave for the the some of this is like angled so make sure you're cutting that off right there So I'm 
just going to probably cut the rest of that off. There are probably many ways to do that, but that's just the way I like to do it. I've been doing that like that for, since I've been cutting again, I've been doing it like that. What's that, 12, 18? I always check my stretch, it's just a habit. Yes, I cut everything out myself now, so I think I did mess up on this one. Let's check it out. Um, yeah, ever since my brother's left, I've been cutting everything myself, so I don't know how I did that, but yeah, it's been that kind of day. That's why I said make sure your angle is correct so I always move it over a little bit and then like make sure it's straight because that's how I screwed up on that last one. Yeah, so usually I've been doing cutting all in one day because my brother doesn't cut for me anymore. And then I sew everything the next day. Or if I get everything cut out, which is a miracle, um, then I'll sew that day as well. But it's a lot of cutting sometimes. I do need to change my blade. Okay, 12 to 18 back. 12 to 18 front, 12 to 18 cuffs, and 12 to 18 waistband. 
is you just roll it up and put it in here. And then 12 to 18 is done. So I put it away so I'm not confused. And I'm weird, I like to put my back on, or my waistband and then my back. I like them all in order. Front and then my cuff. And that one's done. And then this one's almost done. I just have to do the waistband, make sure that the stretch is going the right way. I actually like to do it upside or like right sides together. When I go to do my, I don't even know what, the, what they call it. It's just the method that I do where you fold it and you fold it again so you don't have to surge and then surge again. Is it the hot dog method or something like that? Um, where you, cause then if it was the other way, I like cutting it in right sides together that way I can just fold it up like that and then surge along the edge. And then there's your waistband. So. Usually I do it to those two, but I didn't do it that time. Okay, there's 18 to 24. And then these are like, the top of them are like more, I don't know, slender. The bottom part is like wider, so I like to use the bottom part to hang it off. If you guys are ever interested in these, just let me know. I can let you know which ones I get. It's it's working out pretty well for me over here. Um, room, making room for all of it. I can show you where I hung all the leggings and what it looks like. Let me unplug this. I'll turn it around the other way. So. We just, the other day when I was doing it, these are the leggings that I just put. So these are the bigger leggings that I didn't get acrylics made for because I don't do those big, huge sizes very often. Um, so I didn't have her make them. And they are, yeah, so they go up to size seven, eight. And I just made my template and taped together. This is the like really thick ma magazine um, files that people use to wrap their fabric on. These ones are the only ones left up here that I need to get made. These are all my rompers that I've used my vi Marina vinyl for. And then all the rest of those are the acrylics. So there's bummies and the smaller, I'm sorry, the bummies and leggings are down here. I, I switched them around. So I have them by size. And then these are all my bell bottoms. So I moved my bell bottoms up top. They were down below. So bummies and leggings are down there and then bell bottoms. These are all my headbands and my baby hats. And then on the table, I still have um, all my skirts and stuff to do. These are all the leggings that we that I had acrylics made for. They're right here. So these hangers are so nice, um, but I have no use for them, and I have so many of them because these are what I use to hang my patterns on. So if any of you need hangers, let me know. And I have so many. twins because they're the same exact size zero to three months in my woodland baby bear do we have a thing here probably not I've been oh I have some of it in here 
I've been doing pretty good about getting using scraps, so we'll see. I have a lot of that in here actually. Good, I can get rid of some of it. So I just take out a bunch so I can go through it. I do need to hire you. <laughs> Every time I go to like move the mouse around, it like it's like jittery on the computer screen. The ham hot method, yes. I can never remember that. You guys, I'm telling you, I'm the worst at like technology, just any sort of like I'm just I'm just not I'm I'm a sewer, that's all I do. But the organization I have a glow course so I can cut my own, it's so convenient. I actually wanted to purchase a Glowforge. I still want to purchase a Glowforge, um, but I was going to pr purchase one just to make the acrylics, and then I found that lady, and I was like, yeah, I'll just have her do it. So I also know that when I fold them up like this, I usually put the larger one, larger pieces on the bottom. So like this one's pretty big. So I'm gonna go for that first. But the thing is, is this part right here isn't that wide. So I have to make sure that it is not going to fit right there, but I could make it fit right up here. So first I'm gonna cut this white piece off. That way I know I'm exactly lined up. I can feel where I need to. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. I need to just change my blade really quick. I can't stand when I have a bad blade. to corner.
like to move around with it because I feel like it doesn't hurt your wrist if you're moving with the way that you're cutting. That's just me. This piece I can use for a bummy. This piece right here I can use for a nursing pad. So I don't ever throw it out. This piece right here I'll keep. And I put it in here to use for a nursing pad. And then the rest of it is pretty much useless. pieces but this piece I can use for a bunny so I'll just put that in here another piece you guys I'm taking my time right now so I'm just cutting really slow it's hot in here turn usually I turn the air up when I leave and then I turn it back down in the morning before I come out and I forgot to so it's cooling down This piece right here sometimes I leave this on here because the bottom part of like this is skinnier so it'll fit right here this is bigger so if I use this piece right here to it I can utilize that piece right there and it doesn't matter if I move it back to not waste that. That's going to be wasted anyway because there's nothing I can do with that piece after I cut this. So this piece I can use for a cuff. Cuffs. The 
this is done now. Got two of them. Zero to three months puffs. Let's see if this fits on here. It's going to fit just barely. You gotta make sure your stretch is going the right way. just these little tiny pieces. So, there's that. And I did one more. We'll see if this one fits too. Make sure my stretch is going the right way. Both of these pieces and then one more of that. So how big is this? This one's pretty big. I can probably get it. Maybe this. Like barely too small, probably like half an inch too small, but that's okay. I can use it for other stuff. This one will probably work. Maybe. No. I hate just tearing out. like barely like a quarter of an inch off but that will ruin everything if I I just it has to be the same size so can't use it So usually I fold it so I know exactly how much I'm working with, so I don't have to undo the whole thing. None of these are going to work, I don't think. 
These will work for like bummies, but not rubber pieces. So I'm gonna have to break out the fabric, which is fine. But I do also have another bin um, so that I can use them for like applique, like you had said, or just like other stuff in the future. But like this one right here, I can use for one of my nursing pads. So I just put it up here. Um, but like I said, I don't know if you were on here when I was talking about what my brother used to cut for me. He put scraps here, all underneath here, and I've been going through them. Sorry, somebody keeps calling me. Oh, you guys would love to know that is my um, customer rep for Sewing Machines Plus trying to get a hold of me. But I'm just going to have to call her back. I ordered, I sent out all the giveaways yesterday, and thank you, Liz, for being a part of that. That's awesome. And Liz already sent hers away as well. She did the gift card to Amazon, so that one's done, and that's done. So now I need two of the other ones. Um, so yeah, I had to get those tables ordered. scooting it down as far as I can because I'll have all this left over up here that I can make like a cuff out of. I do have some new products coming that I've been working on on the side. But my main focus right now is to get my new, obviously my exclusive print, I want to launch that soon. I've been focusing on um, 
just my holiday prints because I want to get those up and running. Christmas in July, if you guys are doing that, that's always fun and extra money to um, utilize. So don't forget about that. A lot of people forget about that, but it's actually really good to do Christmas in July. These are actually big enough to maybe do a cuff. Yeah, it's like perfect size for that. I can always tell the back because it's got a bigger armpit hole then the front has a smaller armpit hole so that's how I know front to back and then these all have to be um, I have to press them with the stabilizer so after I get done doing those I usually just set them over here because I need to press them Usually like on my order, it'll say like two items. So I circle that just so I know, because if I'm just glancing at it, I will just look at it and think that it's just one romper. So I make sure when I go through my invoices that I know it's two instead of one. Because sometimes I have done that and then I go to ship them out and I'm like, ah, I'm missing one or whatever piece I'm missing. So those are all cut and now we can sew. I have, what time is it? I have a little bit to sew. So I'll try to turn the camera around and do that. Ugh. All my boxes are in the way. never know what could really 
where your business could really go or end up if you don't have patience with it. It took me a really long time to get to where I'm at. And trust me, lots of dollar signs later, but it happens. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight for anyone. You guys ever see those like videos or TikToks or whatever they call them on like internet versus reality? Everyone thinks it should happen overnight. It's not gonna happen overnight. Reality, it takes a long time. <laughs> So you just have to have patience. And I didn't believe that either at first. And then it's like, oh, once it starts happening, you're like, yes, I get it now. But I didn't always have all this in here. It's, I, I keep adding stuff and I, you guys are, you guys are along the way with me while I'm adding new things. It doesn't just happen overnight. So I'm gonna, is that angle up here or do you guys want me to be closer? I'm going to do the bummies first and then I'll do the romper. Well, as long as you can hear me then, that's fine. Are you asking me, Sarah? If you're asking me that, it's literally foam board. I got the foam board at Walmart, probably. I ordered the faux wood looking vinyl paper, whatever it is, on Amazon. And it comes in rolls. And all I did was wrap it like, like a present. And then I used one foam board on the bottom, and then I use one foam board on the back, and I just slide them up next to each other. They're completely separate. I don't even have them together. There are two separate pieces of foam board, and that's what I use for my pieces. Super easy. I've been using that setup for probably two years now. I really need to clean this bad boy, so it's gonna get loud for a second. So the vacuum, I use this vacuum for everything. It's amazing. This little piece right here that it comes with, I love how it just like, you can move it anywhere you want. It gets in all the crevices. But I did a video on that the other day on my setup. Look at how much fuzz on top of the green. That's how much fuzz was just in there. Just from sewing all day yesterday. Isn't that crazy? So this little vacuum is the best. Uh, but yeah, I did a TikTok video on my setup setup the other day. And it's super, super, super simple. But it gets the job done. And it's very cost effective.
So I'm just filling up my tank with oil. You need to keep this filled up with oil at all times in the front right here. And I just usually oil the needle bars right here a little bit. And then this one, I do a little bit as well, just a little bit. Make sure this one down here is always full too. This one takes a longer time to empty, so I don't think I fill this one up probably every three times that I fill the other one up, maybe even longer. Gotta do as I need. And then always check the very front. I've never had to refill that oil, and that oil comes from up top right here. Um, I filled it up the one time when I first got it, and I haven't touched it since. You don't have to put oil in there unless it's in like danger zone. You're supposed to keep it like in the middle. Um, above, actually like middle to above middle, but mine is up by the green, so it's fine. I don't need to worry about it. And that's all you do. Super simple. Your surgery is on my wish list. Andrew, they sell them here in Australia, but I want the infill table like yours, so I'm still looking. This one? This comes with the machine, so I didn't I didn't purchase this separately. This came with it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's nationwide, um, but I can excuse me, I can double check for you. My setup is similar, but on a smaller scale, and I really need to make it bigger. Yeah, I mean, I just use what is it like the eight? How big the phone cords or the phone boards usually come? Eighteen by twenty-four or something? Those are the ones that I use. But you don't really have big products. So why do you need it super big? Because you do like accessories mostly. I just like mine like that. Um, I don't actually prefer it like that. It's just that's what I started with and then I just used that table and I just never changed it. What they really need to do is come out with a serger that industrial that has an automatic cutter. That would be nice. I know you can get the ones on the side or whatever, but I hate those because every time I do it, I just feel like, I don't know, it doesn't cut right for me or me. So these are the same print, these ones and these ones, um, two different sizes. So I'm, in order for me to chain stitch with these, I'm just doing one with this one so I can get it done quicker, and then I'll do the other one on its own. That way I don't mix them up. It's just how my brain works. But you can do it however you want, there's no right way. Everyone works differently at their own pace. So that's why sometimes you guys will see me do something one way and then the next time you see me do it, it's like a different way. Every day that I come out here, I work a little bit differently. So I do the same thing a thousand different ways, if that makes sense. Sometimes you'll see me about to do what I'm about to do by sewing this and then flipping it. Sometimes you'll see me cut it off and then start on the other side. I'm sure you guys will see me do it so many different ways. 
because that's just how I work. I wish we could listen to music on YouTube. That would be nice. I've actually never gone live on TikTok. I know you can listen to music on TikTok as long as it was just far as I know. Um, but I've never gone live on TikTok. I don't know why. Scared or nervous or anything. It's just it's a new platform. So even just like YouTube, when I went live for the first time, I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. And now I'm like, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I know you guys. So that's why it took me a really long time to do it. I, I don't know. I think it's more for like the younger crowd, but I'm not bashing it because it's helped my business. <laughs> I just do the thing with TikTok is what I've noticed is like no matter what, I know every platform you have to be consistent, and consistency is like the thing to do. Um, in order to get views and likes and whatnot. TikTok is literally, you have to be consistent. Cause I've noticed where I've like posted, 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 like the same amount of videos for the same amount of days. It's been great where I've gotten a lot of views, a lot of people on my website, like orders, whatnot. And then like when I go on vacation or get sick or whatever, and I don't post a video, like consistent, it goes way down. So, I mean, same thing with YouTube, but I mean, it is what it is. So it's just, it's really hard, especially for like us who like didn't grow up with these kind of platforms. It's different. It's, it was, it's been really hard for me to like learn them because I never used any of this stuff. Like I'm, I almost gave up because like Instagram I've had for like five years and it is so hard to grow a following on, to, uh, on um, Instagram. Like I've already got more followers on TikTok than I do on Instagram. And I've been on Instagram for five years and on TikTok I've only been on TikTok for like a few months. Like it's crazy. So I think it just goes to show you like what platforms are actually like super active at this point in time. But they do help. So I try, I keep saying like, like last two weeks ago, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be consistent. 
and then I was consistent and then graduations like things just happen in life where you just can't always be consistent every single day it's just too hard and then now we're going on vacation on Saturday so I'm like unless I've recorded every day to make videos like some people make it seem so easy where you can just just record like 50 videos on the back burner that way you can have something to post I'm like I don't I, I'm just not I don't think that far ahead <laughs> to I'll think about it when I'm in the moment like oh I should have recorded me making these bunnies but I've already made them and I'm not gonna cut out another pair just to make them for a video so I just don't do it then that's just how my brain works I'm like I'll think about it when it's too late so it is what it is. It is always nice when people ask questions though because then that gives you ideas like on what to do or what to make or to do a video on. So a lot of people that have obviously a lot of videos and a lot of following they get lots of questions asked and so it makes it easier for them to be consistent and take videos because then they just answer a question in a video this is how you do this and that is considered a video and puts you up on your consistency and algorithm don't even know if i'm making sense but in my head i'm making sense <laughs> Always make sure you put your waistbands upside down, at least the way that I construct them. It requires them to be upside down. So hopefully I can get through these at least before I have to get off. I have to get off at 2.30.
about a machine that you ordered? I think I missed with the conversation. put my size tag on here. Can you guys see that? So those are my stamp supplies. I do it in the coffee color because most of my fabric is lighter. This is a pretty dark background for what I typically use, but most of them have like a lighter oatmeal background. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I don't do the size, I just do the name. So this one I'm going to do on the back. So I like to take them all out and do on the back first. And I know exactly, I've just been doing it over and over again, so I know exactly like where to put, place it. The key is to not move back and forth. Just press it down and press it back up. And then with these stamps, I just boop, press up and down. And I just leave it like, I don't know if you can see it from there, but just a little bit underneath. So that's gonna go to there. And then this one goes in the back. Started making clothes. What sizes did you make for 
your samples three to six months because I found out that three to six or I just realized when I was doing it that zero to three months is good because you don't waste a lot of fabric when you're doing samples but I sell more three to six months so I guess it depends on what size you're going to sell or you you feel like you sell the most of I'm trying to make sense here so for instance, like when I did markets and stuff, I would do like only a few sizes that I knew consistently sold. But for my website, three to six months always sells. Like, I don't know why, for me, three to six months sells all the time. So I would just do all my samples, like when I do my lineups, now I have models that do um, like my, my, my photos and stuff. So I have to do what size they are. But before I had them, I would do size three to six months because it doesn't take up that much fabric. I know I'm going to sell it and a, they look really cute in pictures. So like for the photo drop that I have with the with the board that I was talking about, it fits three to six months fits on there very nicely with the romper, the leggings, all of it. And so it just makes a good picture. So you have to put all of those like into, you know, just think about what is going to be best for your picture, um, what size you're going to sell the most of, so you're not wasting it, and it's not just sitting there after you made all these samples. So just figure it out that way, I guess. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you just have to take all that into aspect and I guess decide that way. Every business sells different sizes, so we always talk about it, like. Like my friend Sandra, she sells a lot of, I think it was like 12 to 18 months. I sell a lot of 18 to 24 months. I sell a lot of two, three, um, a lot of three to six. It's just random all over the place. So um, my holiday prints, because people like to, are matchy matchy with their like siblings. I sell a ton of like bigger ones, like with the baby. Like I'll do a lot of like newborn and zero to three. And then like a size five, six, like randoms because they have older siblings. So every part of the year is different. Samples are really hard though. Um, and like for me, because I have baby models that do it for me, as they get older, obviously I have to find new ones. So I've gotten lucky that I have a lady who does uh, her, she has a boy and a girl, and her boy is now two, which is getting into my bigger sizes, but she just had a newborn, and she's into like three to six months right now. She's not a newborn newborn anymore, but she just had a baby. So I just am always looking for, I guess, people who are still planning on having children. That way, I still have them for the long run. <laughs> what so if you're wondering I have a large eye needle under here and I just put a magnet on my mat and I just clip it on down here that way it's out of my way I don't drop it So who is going to be on Hoop Fest? I need some ideas on what you want. I know one of you, one of you guys said you wanted to learn applique on Hoop Fest. That's a good one, and that's like mostly what I do, so that'll be good, um, nice and easy. But what are some other ideas? Or if you guys have any questions on anything else that you want to talk about right now? Kind of in a chatty, Discussion, work It's nice and cool in here now, so I can breathe. <laughs> and before, I hate working in the heat. You guys know that. I can't concentrate. Get flustered.
you you use to stamp. Um, it's the archival ink. Is that the way you say it? Archival ink, um, it's acid free, permanent, and waterproof. I use the coffee colors again. I have black, but I don't, I used that in the beginning and then I didn't like how you could kind of see it through some of them. So I switched over. You have to heat set it though. So that's why I like putting it on when I do right here. So as soon as I sit down, I usually stamp all of them. That way they have time to dry. And then I put all the pieces together. And then when I press them at the end, I consider that my, my heat setting. Because technically what I've learned is that the more time you let them sit and dry before heat setting, the longer they last. So I've been doing it at the very beginning. Sometimes I'll even like cut all this out and then stamp them and then come back and sew them like another day or later or whatever. So I do, I, I'm telling you, I work different every day. My head's always everywhere. Lavina, can you email me and I will forward it to him? Uh, your, give me your information, all the information that you sent to him. Binghambliss at yahoo.com. Send me an email with your information and the prize you won and your name and your address and all that good stuff. And then I'll forward that along to Blaine. Because I know we've already, I've already sent all my stuff out. He usually sends it out the next day as well. Um, I know he did have some things going on, so maybe he just got caught up, but yeah. Email me so I can get that, get that going. directional because you can just flip and go. There's no thinking about it. You guys have so much to do before 
before Saturday, actually before Friday ends, because I have to get all my stuff done for work, stuff new. I'm currently doing all my laundry. I've been doing that all day before I come out here. Pack. I still have to get my dog situated. I'm working to get into my grandma's and whatnot. Stop to ask my grandma. I've been meaning to message her. She always watches my dog, though. She doesn't mind. She loves her. Um, a little chihuahua. My grandma loves chihuahuas. bunnies but I have a, I have two rompers to make after these but I don't think I'm gonna have time I can't see my clock that far away I have to get off at 2 30 my time obviously For both of my exclusive prints, Sarah and I have like gone back and forth on what to name it, like trying to decide what's a good name for it. So like, I don't, I think we went like, we went back and forth a couple times on both of them and we ended up with Cowboy Up on my Western one. I can't remember the other ones. What, Sarah, what were the other ones that we were thinking of on that one? But we just both like, you know, you go back and forth, back and forth, and then all of a sudden you're like, ding, ding, like that's it. That's how we both felt for that one. Like, that way it was perfect for it.
underneath here that holds my stamps. I have my stamps on a little thing right here. I just pull it out. And I have all of my fabric in this little acrylic thing with note cards. So that's how I organize that. And I just write it down. So like this one is Sonora, Sonoran Cactus. I know that just because it's my, it's my print, so I know the name. And I just keep a note card in here. I just have the name of it, Sonora Sunrise Cactus. And then when I ordered the fabric or when it was printed, that's how I do it. There's many ways to organize this. I also have another one here that's the same print, Sonora Sunrise Cactus, but then on the other side of the card I put Minky because this is organic cotton knit. And then I also have, um, I think 98% of my prints that I have, I also have a Minky because I like to be able to offer it in every print or every print and every different kind of fabric I have. So I have note cards for each one of them because I don't necessarily reorder my organic knit at the same consistency that I order my new keys. So they sell differently. So I always keep a separate card for them. That way, if anything were ever to come back on me, I have documentation of when I bought it, I have receipts, I have everything. Plus, it's really, really easy. If you guys order from Spoonflower, you know sometimes it's kind of hard to find the same exact print that you had and you just want to reorder it instead of having to go through your orders because you can't see the prints on there or what you order, they just have like the title or the, I'm sorry, the total. So if I were to want to really quickly reorder this and not have to go through my entire order list, I can look at my note card and say, okay, the last time I ordered it was on 831 or whatever the date is, then I can just go to my orders and go down to that date that I ordered it from last, click on my invoice, and there is my print that I ordered. I can click on it and reorder it, and that's how it's super fast. So I just make a whole list of all the fabric I want to reorder by going through my note cards and then I go to my computer and do it really quickly and it takes five minutes versus a half an hour going through all those things. So work smarter, not harder. <laughs> so that's how I organize all that. Now I gotta put tags on these. So I'll make you guys look in here. Yeah, I did name both ultimately, but we were kind of going back and forth on what to name them.
Alexa off. So, but thank you guys so much for being here. And if I get on later, I hope I see you guys all later. Thanks again and have a good day. Bye guys.